This is a door in a video game. And it's bonkers hard to open. A lot of you might have heard that doors in video games are more complex than one might think. Now why is that? Well, why don't I show you how I implemented the doors in my game? I am currently working on a multiplayer PSX style horror game that I started on just a couple of weeks ago. I've started with implementing multiplayer and made a visual prototype, so now I need to start making some more mechanics. And that's where the doors come in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is let the player know that they can interact with the door. Or they'll just be wandering around looking at doors all day and wonder, what is this peculiar looking thing that resembles a door? Now, I don't want to clutter up the entire screen with UI, but instead we'll implement a highlight on objects that they can interact with when they are looking at them. For this, we need to make a new object channel type called interactables. And then we will set the door collision to the newly created object type. Heading into the first person character script, we make a new function for the highlight that is called each frame. This script simply sends out a line trace from the camera to small distance towards what the player is looking at. And if it hits an interactable object, it will draw a white line around it. Stella. Now we know we can interact with it. But why isn't anything happening? Oh, right. We've literally not started with the door process. Okay, when we press E, we want to interact with the door. Pressing E should send out a line trace as described before, and if it hits a door, well, then we open the door by rotating it and playing a sound. Well, great. That's that. Now let's also close it. I said let's close it. Okay. We need to make it so that if we press it again while it's opening, it should reverse the animation from the same point. We'll add this flip-flop node that alternates animation direction every time the door is pressed. Okay, great, it's now working. Now let's see what happens if we add another door. Let's rotate another direction. Fuck! Okay, we can fix this. Let's just get the start rotation of the door when it is spawned in game and add it onto the animation rotation. Perfect. And that's how doors are made. Didn't you add keys to the game? Yes, yes, okay. Let's add keys. For that, we will need a list of keys. In this list, we can add specific keys, like key to the bathroom door, or kitchen door, or the key to my heart, etc. I mean, uh, for the door script, we need to add a variable for the specific key that it needs and put in the key that we want. We also need to add a list of keys to the player's variables to keep a check on what keys the player actually has. Now, we need a key though. Blender time! I headed into Blender and made a key model. I dropped it in Unreal and made a quick blueprint for it that simply keeps a check on what key it is. Now, when we try to open the door, we just see if we can open it first. This function simply checks if it needs a key at all, and if it does, it checks if we have the key for the door that we try to open by comparing the keys to the required door key. Now we can only open the door if we have the right key. However, nothing happens if we can't open it. We need to let the player know that they can't open it or they'll get pissed off. Like, uh, what is this buggy ass game? To solve this, I just made a simple animation for the handle that shows that it's been pulled whenever someone tries to open it. And that stalls. Now let's play with our friends. Yo, where did you go? What do you mean, the door is open? It's not open for me. Replication. Okay, so uh, to get this to work for multiplayer, we need to make sure that uh, the relevant things for all players are replicated between the server and its clients. All the players can now see that the doors are open. Brilliant. Uh, let's just ignore the fact that uh, clients can't hear some sounds for some objects, so it's just minor inconveniences. Other than the doors, I've introduced more functionality. Among other things, I've added drawers and cupboards. Uh, these actually build on the blueprints for the doors and were quite easy to implement. 
and uh, they therefore worked immediately for multiplayer too. I said they worked immediately. How do you fucking blah? Why can't you see that I opened this drawer? So I thought it would work immediately since it builds on the same principles and uh, basically uses the same scripts. But the clients uh, would not interact with anything except the doors. It took me an eternity to realize this, but uh, the rotation of players were replicated from the clients, but not the camera rotation. And uh, this meant that only rotations from the set axis was correct, and since doors were eye level, they worked. I therefore had to add to the blueprint logic, something that would keep a check on the camera rotation, and now it should work. Look at that laser vision. I then added flashlights, so you can now navigate the dark area. Wow, less spoopy. I then tried making this combination lock. I modeled it in Blender and textured it with a pixelated font. The rolling parts are then made into interactable objects just like the door. To make it easier for myself, I integrated it with the key system. So each lock has a key name. This means that a door can be given this lock as a key, and when it's unlocked, meaning the right combination has been used, the key is added to the player's inventory. With this solution I don't need to make a separate system for these locks to work with doors, and it actually works really well. After that, I was hit with the Rona, and I have been out for the last week. Uh, during this time I've mostly been in, been in my couch. But I had an hour or so of energy to make this collection of books and carpets. Just get something done. But the rest will wait for the next vlog. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and comment on any suggestions for the game. Until next time, ciao.